Hey Bookaholics, oh, welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you my October 2022 wrap up. Now, I'm very sorry if there is any kind of echo going on. We have newly refurbished and done up my reading room, so I'm not used to the acoustics in here yet. I may be getting a rug, I'm not sure, so because uh, I'm in a hot country, but also Echo, I'm not sure. We'll be seeing about that, but for now, it's it's a newly done up room. I'm hoping the Echo will, you know, dissipate over use, but um, for now, yeah, this is the audio that we have. Um, I will have a tour of the reading room in the works at some point, so you will be getting a view of it, but the doing up of the reading room is the reason that this video is later than it usually would be. But I am, you know, very excited to be filming in here. This is the first video that I've filmed in here. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with my space. And hopefully I still manage to read a decent amount. Um, I have a lot to talk about. So we might as well just get straight into the books that I read. For October, I did do a vampire-inspired reading month, so all of the books in here will be very vampire-esque. Um, I read two ebooks this month, which will be the ones that I start with, solely on the basis that those will be the ones that I'm more likely to forget. The first one that I'm going to talk about is The House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. The reason that this one is going to be the first one I talk about is because this is the one that is uh, slightly less vampiric than the others. They are not vampires in the traditional sense because we follow a girl named Marion who uh, is done with her life of servitude and decides instead to become a blood maid. Now blood maids are women who are sent off to the rich families in the north who are all ailing from a rare blood disease that means that they need to consume other people's blood to stay alive and the blood maids go and they send themselves out to these country estates where they may live in luxury in exchange for their blood so that these rich people can drink them and while we're there so Marion goes and she goes to live with um Lisbeth who is the head of the house of hunger she is the aristocrat there and while she is there, we get lust, we get passion, and we also get a mystery style story. I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it four stars. I um, I really liked the atmosphere and the intrigue. I really did like trying to uh, um, unravel some of the plot threads that were presented throughout the, the course of the novel. So overall, I just, I had a good time with it. Um, it's not necessarily a, like a new favorite, but I, I definitely think I will be getting the paperback of this because I would like to reread it. Um, and I really liked the twist that it took on vampires. I really liked that it brought in those gothic vibes that I really was looking for for this month. Um, so it lived up to pretty much all of my expectations and I look forward to reading more from this author in the future. The other ebook that I read was A Dowry of Blood by S.E. Gibson and this one is a Dracula retelling. This one is about um, Dracula's brides. We are following Dracula's first bride, Constanta, as she becomes his bride from being a peasant who he saves and then how he acquires the rest of his brides. It is a story of, of passion, but mostly at the forefront, this is a story of domestic abuse and, and the, the constraints that are put on people, especially when they are treated more as possessions than as people. Um, it was a very interesting take on Dracula and it definitely gave a voice to women who frequently are overlooked um in this narrative and i think that it was done really really well the prose is definitely one that takes a little while to get into in my opinion because it is mostly in second person it is told in the form of a memoir of constantas where she is telling dracula the reasons that she came to being his wife the reasons that she came to then hating him and you are you are seeing the story but you are seeing it through her telling him her motivations her telling him her side of the story um and it, it was a very very interesting take on the story but as i said the writing style does take a while to get into and i can understand that some people would possibly not enjoy it but i really really liked it and i will again probably be trying to get my hands on the paperback when it comes out moving into the physical books that i read however uh, i'm going to continue down the uh the dracula 
rabbit hole and we'll continue with the brides of dracula and i have the death of the skulls by kieran norwood hardgrave this is a ya story about the origins of dracula's brides um and we are following twins they are kizzy and oh what's their sister called oh lil and this is the story of two girls but we are getting it only from the perspective of lil and they are twins and they are roma they are you know from the romani tribe and they are captured and enslaved and then eventually become the brides of dracula and it's how they come to be this way i was disappointed in this book i'm not going to lie because for I, I was actually disappointed for multiple reasons firstly we do have these girls and the point of only getting the perspective of one felt sort of superfluous it's like well if we're putting so much emphasis on both where we're we not getting both perspectives um i also think that it was possibly a bit too rushed for my liking i would have liked to have cared more about these people cared more about any of the characters in the story there isn't a single character in the story that i felt particularly compelled by the inevitability of the narrative therefore meant that it really needed to do something special for it to be worthwhile because you know that these women are going to end up being the brides of dracula so the, the story leading up to that is what needed to be interesting because the reveal isn't a reveal. There's no surprise element to it. And it just didn't fulfill that for me. And the other problem that I have is that Dracula in the story has three brides. And basically the third one gets a cursory mention at the end of the story. Now for a book that is trying to tell the story of the forgotten women in Dracula, it managed to forget one of the women in Dracula. So it, to, it, to me, it just felt a little bit like, oh, I just wanted to tell this story and then just tacked Dracula onto the end of it. Um, and it just really wasn't for me, which is a shame because I was hoping to really, really love this, but I just really couldn't connect with it. Um, there were, the, the prose is lovely. The fact that we had Roman representation in there, I think is also really important. The fact that it did discuss the slave trade of the traveling people in Europe during this time and bringing that to light, I also think was incredibly important. And obviously the abuse that comes with uh, authoritarian monarchs during this time, etc. I do really, really appreciate that. I just would have liked to care more about them as people and sort of as a symbol for something for a political statement that the author wanted to make it's like if you are going to discuss how horrific these people were treated you do need to make them feel like people for it to actually resonate and i just felt like they were plot points as opposed to people and therefore it defeated the object of female representation of roma representation of you know the atrocities that were committed on on peasantry all of that was insignificant because you don't care about the characters because they don't feel like characters they feel like caricatures which was a real shame we also have twins in here and it fell into a typical dynamic of like good twin bad twin thing going on which i also found a bit exhausting so there were there were too many things that were wrong with it however i can understand that this would be a good ya book to introduce the concept of dracula to young girls because it does have representation in it and you know dracula in itself is quite dry anyway so i can understand why this would be a good entry point for dracula to ya readers but it doesn't it didn't resonate with me per that well personally and i gave it a 2.75 stars Continuing on with Dracula retellings and continuing on with Dracula retellings that disappointed me and I had very high hopes for actually I have the historian by Elizabeth Costova. I okay on the one hand I I really really like this the prose in this is absolutely stunning the vibes and atmosphere in this book is absolutely incredible but There were a decent amount of historical inaccuracies in him that were annoying me now in fantasy like in if you're gonna like completely fictionalize something like alternate histories or or fantasy books that are based on history you are then given yourself leeway to completely reinvent history but the problem that i had with the historian is that it was trying very much to pretend it was historical and therefore but we have dracula in it and dracula obviously is a fictional character who was inspired by vlad the impaler or vlad tepe 
much. Now, the problem with that narrative is that Dracula and Vlad are actually very different characters, like very different people. Vlad was a a warlord, essentially. He he and he committed atrocities, and the, those atrocities are very very different to the atrocities that Dracula committed. Uh, the likes of, for example, Vlad, he yes impaled a lot of people, but he actually didn't have much of a problem with his own people. He was very protective of his own people, especially the lower classes. He's actually considered a hero um, in Romanian history. It's that he murdered a lot of Ottomans who were trying to invade his country, and that's what gave him his notoriety. Uh, while Dracula is just someone who mercilessly kills people because he wants to eat them. So I think that the problem that I have is that this book tried to merge these two characters into one character, and they're not. Just because one inspired the other does not actually make them the same character. And I think that the failing that this book had is that it had to change the narrative of both. It had to make Count Dracula less Dracula, and it had to make Vlad Tepes la less Vlad Tepes, and it had to meet in this middle ground. And therefore it lost the essence of both the historical figure and the monstrous character. Um, so it didn't pull through on either of those things. So the book itself, really entertaining, the vibes, fantastic, the plot, intriguing, but I did have to deduct a couple of points because I really struggled to believe that this was about Dracula or Vlad Tepes because it compromised both of their characters to make them one. Um, and I struggled with that. However, I still did give this a 3.5 stars and I still very much enjoyed, like I said, the elements that I enjoyed and I would still recommend. And if you're not someone who is particularly familiar with Dracula or Vlad Tepes, then this is definitely a book that you'll enjoy. If you like the gothic vibes, if you like like whimsical slash prosaical writing and almost dark academia vibes because there is a lot of like mentions of going to libraries and studying and reading, etc. Um, I would still very much recommend so don't take my word on my minor frustrations, but it was irking me throughout a lot of the narrative. In further Dracula retelling news, I also read the entire Conqueror saga by Kirsten White, which consists of uh, And I Darken, Now I Rise, and Bright We Burn. And this one is a gender-bent fantastical-ish um, Dracula retelling. I say fantastical because it's actually obviously alternate history, it's gender bent, so we have uh, Leda, who is a female iteration of Vlad Tepes, um, and we also have, you know, slight alterations to history, but at the same time it is not fantastical in the sense that it does not have any magic in it at all, it just does read much more like alternate history, I suppose. Um, but I really liked these books. Now again, the reason I iterated before with me having no problem with historical inconsistencies is that, for example, this book, because it changed the gender of, of Vlad to Leda, we instantly had like a shift in dynamic. I am not, this book is not pretending to be historically accurate. It's not trying to make you believe that this is our history because we have Leda, we don't have Vlad. Um, so there was that. So. I could at least let slip the historical inaccuracies with this one. Um, they were very, very glaring, but they, you know, th there were inaccuracies that I could overlook. Now, certain character markers I did struggle with, especially when it came to Mehmed, because he eventually becomes possibly one of the most powerful Ottoman rulers that was seen historically. Um, he is an incredible um, sultan, uh, whether you despise him or not. And if you look at history, there is cause to despise him, but definitely cause to admire him, as is frequent with most historical leaders. And, you know, I, I, I did struggle sometimes to get on board with that this dude is going to become this dude, really. Um, but it did pull through, and I did enjoy that. There were also historical inaccuracies when it came to Vlad, which, again, is to be expected when we're changing the character. Um... But the motivations for Vlad seemed very similar in later as well as to why they are the way they are um, and the justifications that they give and whether or not you buy into them is kind of more down to your personal choice. I liked these stories. I do think that they um, didn't downplay the brutality as much as I thought they would for YA and they are definitely some of the best YA I've read in a while when it comes to being compelling and engaging and not feeling too melodramatic. Um, 
So I definitely enjoyed, I would definitely recommend if you are looking for YA historical, historical fiction um, and you want some Vlad instead of Dracula. You know, if you're wanting Vlad Tepes instead of Dracula and you're retelling for a change, then these are, they're not, they're not terrible. I have heard that the language used in here in regards to the use of Romanian words is not great. So do bear that in mind, especially if you're Romanian or speak Romanian or speak Slavic languages, as I imagine that you would, uh, the, it's, it, it tends to come from the suffixes and prefixes. So I imagine that would apply to several Slavic languages. So that might be irksome. I'm not sure. Obviously, I don't speak um, Romanian, so it, it wasn't necessarily too much of a trouble for me, um, but do you bear that in mind. The last book that I read in the Inspired by Dracula section I have is Helsing by Kohota Hirano. This one is a manga and it is a binder of, I don't remember, I don't know how many volumes it's a binder of actually. Uh, five, the first five volumes of this manga and it is about a group of people who are called the Helsings which are basically descended from, like the, the group was formed by Abraham Van Helsing to slay monsters, namely vampires. And in it we are following a man named Alucard who is a Helsing, however Alucard is also a vampire and he is trying to keep that a secret um, and we are following him and his ruthlessness and his double identity etc and um, yeah I enjoyed this again I'm not a big manga girl I'm not huge on the manga I don't know if I'll continue with these I'm not gonna lie but I did enjoy this installment enough it has a lot of like noir vibes to it I'll see if I can find something there we go the very first page it has it has some very like detective noir vibes mixed with some gothic vibes mixed with some like action vibes so it was it was a fun time you know we've got guns going on here but it still has like that you know detective noir um like aesthetic going on so yeah for the most part I, I i enjoyed it it's not hugely memorable and it's definitely not one that i think i'll carry with me i'm not really going to go hard on a review with this because again i'm not really much of a manga girl i don't really know what i'm talking about and i'm sure there are people out there who have done much more justice than me um so enjoyed it was fine not a new favorite don't know if i'll continue <laughs> as i was on a dracula spree of course I had to read Dracula by Bram Stoker and this one obviously is the classic that inspired the monster, inspired in itself by the historical figure Vlad Tepes or Vlad the Impaler who was a ruler of Vilekia and it's everyone knows the story I don't really need to review it it is a reread for me as well but I did find it enjoyable enough I, I think I found it more enjoyable this time round it is epistolary which means that it's written in diary entries newspaper clippings uh letters etc uh which was a, an interesting way to consume this story I think that I didn't really appreciate that the first time round um you know how difficult it must have been for a Bram Stoker to be able to convey such a story through like diary entries and letters um and I I do I, I did appreciate it and I enjoyed it however I um at the same time it's a bit dry it is a little bit like you know a lot of classics they didn't have a huge amount of character at the forefront it's kind of more like a maybe a self-insert type job but it, it you know it's a little bit dry it's a little bit on the dense side there are definitely parts that go overboard a little bit. The women are somewhat questionably written, etc. All the things you can expect from a classic essentially apply to this. It was an entertaining time. If it's a story that sounds interesting and you're okay reading classics, this should be fine. If you, you know, don't like your women being written by a man in the, you know, late 1800s, then maybe it's not for you. <laughs> What can I say? I'm definitely losing the light, but we're going to try and continue with this one. Um, the next one, continuing on slightly with the Dracula vibes, we have Carmilla, which is the book that in turn inspired Dracula. And this one is about Carmilla, who is a vampire. And we have... <laughs> this is the first book that had vampires as like a sultry, sexual being. So this monstrous, terrifying thing, I believe and it's a short story so it doesn't you know have much to say it's just kind of more like 
a thought process is like thoughts on vampires if they were sexy um and we do also have a little bit of like implied homoerotica so it's like um you know are vampires like more inclined to um being sexual and therefore if they are more inclined to being sexual like if blood if taking blood is sexual then is taking is a female vampire taking blood from a woman also a sexual act kind of vibes um there is no explicit sex in here um but it's kind of implied i think maybe that's more implied to a modern audience where uh we're not quite so heteronormative anymore or at least we fucking shouldn't be. Um, so there is that. I, I don't know how much of that. It's just like my modern lens being like, huh, okay, that's that's gay. And I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, I enjoyed it. Again, it's along the same lines, except that because we have a female protagonist, I did find that the way that women were depicted in this to be a little bit less to my liking. I don't know. I just can't really. I struggle to connect with women written by men there i said it and i'm that person and you know it's a woman and it's written by a man and it's written by a man a long fucking time ago so it there was it wasn't it wasn't the best uh in that sense also i have an illustrated version and the illustrations in here uh would get me demonetized if i could get monetized let's put it that way i i'm not i'm not a fan of the uh of the uh, the illustrations i mean like there are talks of orgies there's talks of sex in here but we don't get any like explicit sex scenes it's kind of more just like people are having sex people are having orgies but it's not detailed so it's not hugely graphic in that sense if you don't like it but again it still does very much talk about sex in here so does that um and yeah i enjoyed it i i don't know if i'd recommend i don't know it depends on your taste, I suppose. I'm not doing very well with the classics. I never know how to talk about classics. And sadly, the book that I wanted to get to this month but did not manage to get round to was Tales of New Vampires by Anne Rice. I am possibly going to try and read this in November, uh, depending on my mood. But this one is the one off of the TBR that I didn't manage to read. I was really excited to get to this as well, but I just I, I ran out of time. And life gets in the way sometimes. But yeah, so the, those those are the books that I did, and in this case didn't read, uh, throughout the month of October, all my vampire reads, I did all my Dracula stuff, I watched a lot of Dracula movies, I am going to be doing a video where I talk about Dracula adaptations, so you can look forward to that one, and yeah, that's it. So, new reading room, lots of books read, lots of books to read. So. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them as the whole idea of the video is to spark conversation and um, hopefully I will catch you in the next one. I'll see you soon guys. Bye!